Part two of four is all about permaculture gardens. Before and after images will be shared and four permaculture gardens are showcased. So what do permaculture gardens look like? You can draw from the principles in different ways and implement them with your own unique approach. In locations where permaculture gardens grow, life flourishes. Fish repopulate streams, birdsong fills the air, and even rare species that were thought long gone from an area have returned. You can combine ancient techniques, modern science and understanding, your intuition. You can plant things you're drawn to, design what you love. You can follow sacred geometry patterns. Patterns in nature tend to be balanced, symmetrical, and non-linear. This makes them very strong since they have no weak corners. Pleasing circles, spirals, and crescent shapes can be found in nature and emulating them can make your garden healthier and easier to maintain. Branching and fractal patterns are efficient, so are networks of links and nodes, and they're all non-hierarchical, so they have strong connections. Nature moves in curves, and mankind often tries to bring order to the world by making things linear and angular. This tends to weaken them and can be destructive to the natural form. When you consider water, which naturally branches, bubbles, and stays cool under the canopy of bordering trees, it purifies itself as it travels. We force it with great effort into holding reservoirs, into angled pipes, it runs under our linear roads where it overheats and loses its healthy life force. This lack of vitality is reflected in the fact that the quality of most of our drinking water in cities is rather poor. I believe permaculture gardens are the ultimate creation. It's a changing landscape. It grows. It's alive. It's a canvas that adapts to seasons. It interacts with you. It nourishes you and teaches you. This is the residence of Becky and Bill Wilson. They're the founders of Midwest Permaculture in Cabri, Illinois, and this is their home in 2007. This is what their home looks like 10 years later. They put in a rain catchment system, hazelnut bushes, peach, apple, and cherry trees. They have a big herb garden and they utilize aquaponics. Becky and Bill's permaculture students helped to create a rain catchment system. Rain collected on the roof runs from the drain pipes and into swales. It's then stored in three rain garden ponds in their yard where it soaks slowly into the subsoil. This limits the amount of watering needed. It holds around 1,400 gallons of water. It keeps their sidewalk drier and safer in the winter as well. The mounded soil from the digging created interesting contour for the garden. They also created berms on the property edge to hold more water if the rain gardens overflow. The trails in their yard are made of shredded wood. You can see a couple of guilds, which are trees and compatible plants grouped together. They chose native prairie plants for the bottom of the rain gardens because they tolerate flooding and dry periods. Here's an aerial view of their design. Now they have a hundred edible and useful plants. Some of them are listed on the left. And they say that the purpose of their work is to support the transition of our society from a culture of consumption into a culture of creation. And they have some really wonderful free booklets on their website. This is a picture of James Prigioni's backyard in Toms River, New, New Jersey. And uh, it only took five years to go from the before to the lash after shot. 
he used uh, the back to Eden method of um, using a very thick layer of wood chips and he would just let the wood chips degrade over a year and then pull them away to create little planting holes and um, dig down to where they had degraded and there was nice soil underneath the wood chips and he'd put his plants in there and um, the wood chips worked really well just as a, a suppressant for other plants he didn't want popping up. He was also inspired by Masanobu Fukuoka's natural farming techniques. These are based on the Tao philosophy of Wu Wei, which could be translated really loosely as do-nothing farming. So this involves no action against nature, no rushing to fix a problem, no unnecessary pruning, no plowing, no chemicals, and um, in Masanobu's case, no flooding of rice fields. And he had a, a really healthy ecosystem with very high yields and wrote a fabulous book called One Straw Revolution. Here's James and his seven-year-old dog, Tuck, showing off their bounty. James does a lot of really fantastic videos that are fun and informative, and Tuck follows him around and eats all the vegetables before he gets a chance to pick them. As you can see, James Prigioni is really enthusiastic and has a lot of energy. Bealtaine Cottage is Colette O'Neill's farm, where she is the sole woman involved. It's important to her that there's no helpers. She wanted to prove that one person is all it takes to create a paradise. Her farm is on three acres in West Ireland. She said it had the poorest of soils, was wet, rushy, and north-facing, and it was a monocrop of grass that could only sustain two cows. Here it is 12 years later, with the cottage barely visible. Colette got donations, wrote a book, and raised money to make her dream happen. She said standard agriculture in the area gets numerous grants, but the Irish government ignored funding her project. But now she's planted over 100 deciduous trees, has two large orchards, and around 1,000 species of trees, shrubs, flowers, and vegetables growing at the cottage. Here's the pond Colette dug before planting. This is the pond in 2018. The plants are interconnected and each tree has multiple functions that benefit the rest of the species and brings balance to the entire land. The soil is rich and fertile. It smells like a lush, dense rainforest. She feels reconnected to the earth. There's a large surplus of food that she makes into jams, wines, pickles, chutneys, and dried foods. This is the lane leading to Bealtaine Farm when Colette first acquired it. This is the lane 12 years later. Colette does podcasting and videos, and she's had thousands of visitors. She has lots of time to enjoy her farm. She says it's an arc for nature. She feels like she's living with the planet rather than on the planet. She's now calling it goddess permaculture because it embraces the divine feminine and welcomes all life. Even Colette's cabin uses permaculture principles. She uses recycled materials, as you can tell from the broken tile floor. Beck Eldouin Farm was created by Perrine and Charles Erf Gruyer in 2006 in Normandy, France. The couple had never farmed before, but they wanted to live close to and respectfully with nature. They wanted to be a force for rebuilding the planet rather than destroying it. This is an overview of the farm in 2015. At a quarter acre, it is compact and diversified. 
They feel like pioneers who take the best of past and present techniques. The approaches they use are from 19th century Parisian market gardeners, Amazonian tribespeople, and Asian efficient microorganisms related practices. It is an experimental and research farm, and many studies are conducted on site. It's also a market garden. Their productivity is 10 times higher than that of mechanized organic farming, showing that permaculture gardens can produce good incomes. Charles says they stay humble and recognize there is not one truth, but 1,000 possible approaches. The gardens are a haven of biodiversity and a place of real joy and beauty to live and work. They say their exploration has led to something incredibly important for mankind, agriculture which is not just sustainable, but restorative.